Hi. <laughs> Guess what? It's Monday. It's Sarah Peasley. I'm wearing a black shirt and I'm coming to you live from the home office of Sarah Peasley Hand Knitter. So, woo! Super exciting. Looks like any other week, but, um, and it is like any other week. Sun's still shining. Uh, Neighbors had a tree cut down yesterday. No, not yesterday. Holy cow, Sarah, like an hour ago. That wasn't yesterday. <laughs> not at this time of day. And people are riding their bikes. It's a beautiful day. Um, so yay. I have so much excitement planned for you today. I can't even stand it. Actually, I have absolutely no idea what I'm going to talk to you about. So, um, I was going to demonstrate one very easy thing and I was going and I dropped my crochet hook out of my blanket. That's not the thing I was going to demonstrate. And I um, have something from my past that I thought we could explore together. My past as in it existed. I'm trying to figure out if I put my crochet hook in the right way. Um, it's my mom's knitting bag. So I thought we could um, look through that together. I haven't looked through it for, you know, it's been looked at. Hi, Marilyn. Hi, Diane. It's been looked at, but not recently. So I don't know what's in there. Whatever I decided to store in there. And I, um, yeah, so that'll be exciting. That'll be in just a little bit because I don't, I don't have a lot. I just handed in a file and edited, I just edited a file and, and turned it in. So that was due, I'm going to say tomorrow morning because of events that happened. Um, and so it was early. <laughs> it was really due yesterday. Um, and I was finishing up today and they emailed and said, if you can just answer this one question, then you can have till tomorrow. I was like, Ooh, what I said was you really know how to sweet talk a girl, don't you? And, um, but I ended up finishing it today. So I sent it so early Woo! and plenty more in the pile. So that's good. I like making money. That's one of my, that's, between teaching, which I haven't been doing much of lately, and editing, those are my um, most of my work that I do to pay the bills. But what I'm working on right now and not getting paid to do is I, I'm sitting here with my beautiful afghan in my lap. Isn't that so pretty? I am so close to being done. I'm either. So I have... According to my plan, I have this much of the current ball left, which is not very much. You know, I have no idea. Well, yes, I do have an idea. 11 is the answer. Um, in the beginning, I noticed that I could get 11 rows of double crochets out of one skein of yarn approximately, like maybe 10 and a half, maybe something else. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. So that would be, um, from the red up, which is not where a ball started, but that would be this much yarn, this many rows, which is, cause I know you really want to know, um, about four inches. So I have, I don't know, I have a million inches. So that's quite a few skeins under my, under my Afghan belt. And um, this is, this is the next one. So my, my goal, my parameter for this Afghan is, um, besides having the best time of my life crocheting something, is that I'm doing, doing in sequence, in a three skein repeat, something with red in it and then something with blue in it which is what i'm on now ran out of the blue almost ran out of the blue and then something with green in it now you'll notice that all of these have blue in them whatever there's some kind of red some kind of blue and then some kind of green and you know there's other colors too right so here was obviously that was part of the red skein and then uh, I'm going with blue here <laughs> and then, you know, green and then red. And now I'm in blue, which had a lot of green in it and then green and then red. And then I'm either done or I have three more because I bought 19 to begin with. There's the other three. It would be blue, green, 
red. See how that works? There's hardly any blue in, whoops, in this one, but that would count as a blue. And I may, so what I'm going to do, because it is actually long enough now, probably, this is the afghan that's going to live on my couch sometimes, and it's the one I'm going to take my naps in, so it has to, like, not be too short for my feet and also be able to hike over my shoulder um, and also over my bed sometimes. So that's a queen size bed. I don't care if it drapes over, but I want it to be long enough. Um, so it's, it's, it's plenty long. Look how pretty, see it's that long. I could count rows and then divide by four. I don't know what I could do divide by 11 and then I would know how many inches it was, but I'm not going to do that. So I was at the end of a row, I'm um, turning the row. I get confused because um, I don't get confused. I have to stop and think, which is the same as being confused in my brain because um, so here's my loop at the end of the row. And in a, in a traditional, yep. Um, nope. fashion when you knit your yarn goes one way over the needle um conventionally and conventionally meaning like the way that we're taught in books here in the u.s um if this if my finger hey guess what if my knitting needle here was a knitting needle then the yarn would be going over the needle and the the part that moves hmm it would be in the back it would be behind so here's the part that moves oh, it's behind that's traditional you know traditional is not the right word i don't think uh conventional knitting something something and then with a crochet hook if you follow this the same books but for crochet the um part that moves <laughs> goes in the front but guess what life is wonderful because you can um knit or crochet either way and as long as you get some fabric underneath that does what you want it to do then that is hunky dory but the books aren't written that way can you see maybe not it's the front, except I'm at the end of the row. So I'm going to turn and go the other way. Chain three, one, two, three, turn. And I, you know, one of the things I'm trying to learn about crochet is exactly how you're supposed to be doing things. And I do think, you know, as long as we're consistent, does it matter? But I am trying to figure out what's supposed to be happening. I always turn the same way and I don't know what it is. I just do it. So let's see what it is. I just finished. I turn. So I just finished. Here's my row. Do, 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 do. And then I chained and I'm turning. If we look at the top, it's clockwise. So I don't know. Um, from the top down. And then I'm going to start my. Start my. Um. That's a double. So the turning, I know if you, it's, it's not a, that exciting. The turning chain counts as a double crochet. And then I put a second one in this, that spot. I like when you can just crochet into big giant spots like that. And then skip this whole guy. We're going to call it a cluster or a granny, a cluster of grannies, a cluster of double crochets, and then go into this next giant hole and do, oops, except I forgot to do the whoopy part. So I'm putting three double crochets in there. One into the same giant hole. Two, only if you do it correctly though, Sarah, hang on. It's hard to crochet way up in the air with a heavy blanket. Okay, two, swoop, swoop, and then three, do you guys all know how to crochet? Have you tried to crochet? Do you prefer to crochet? So there's three double crochets in that big hole. So now I'm going to go skip this whole guy or gal and jump over and do three over here. And I'm not super, uh, you know, 
gauge in crochet is like another whole thing. <laughs> I understand what it is. I'm not positive. I'm completely even in my crocheting um, of my stitches. You know, Diane, I don't know. I think you're referring to which way you turn at the end of the row. I think it doesn't matter, but I would think it would be nice to be consistent. So that's, um, and I am, but it's weird because I turn a particular way and without thinking about it. So that might come from. No. I don't know. I don't know if it comes from knitting. I don't know. Do we have to know? We might not have to know. So there's another three. Very exciting. I'm just doing a little bit of this because I don't really have anything else. Um, that's not true. So I thought as I was getting better at crochet that I would do some easy crochet classes. And I, I offered one this summer um, at, a, at a thing where I taught classes. A festival? A thing where classes were held. I'm blanking Fiber World at Fiber World and it didn't go. Um, and you know, people maybe don't want to learn easy crochet. Um, I was going to teach, heck, I don't know what I was going to teach, something easy. Or maybe, maybe, you know, I just am not the world's most um, famous crocheter. So maybe it's that, but I kind of like the fact that I'm studying it and I could share what I'm learning. Um, my friend Edie Ekman has a, uh, a series actually. Um, I mean, I'm sure she has just learned to crochet classes because she has a gazillion classes. I'll put her website in here, but she also has some like Afghan patterns uh, that are crochet technique thingies. <laughs> So, you know, either squares or strips, and each one's a little bit different. Where is the chat? There's the chat. Hi, Jane. Um, I crochet, but like knitting better. Don't know why, because crochet seems faster. Well, you would think so, Diane. There. Did that work? I assume that's right. Yep. Um, you would think it's faster, but uh, just out of reach or a little more than just out of reach, is the going off to college Afghan that I'm crocheting for my youngest son, which I may have told you guys about, but it hasn't been recently, I'm pretty sure. I'm going to keep crocheting while we're talking because it just brings me joy. Oh, sorry, that didn't sound like it did, but it really does, as does talking to you. So I'm getting double double joy right now. Um, so when my oldest son went off to college, I... um. This is the part where I'm going to not be able to count to three because I'm talking. But when my oldest son went off to college, I had an Afghan all knit for him out of a pattern that I had, out of yarn that was hand dyed by Nancy McRae, who used to own Woven Art and dyed yarn um, that was sold at the store. And it was a super wash and it was navy blue and it was gorgeous. And I knit this uh, Afghan. I think I held the yarn doubled. I don't really remember. I would like to not knock over my drinks as usual. And um, I think he had it to go off to college or, you know, thereabouts. And then um, five years later, um, five years later, when son number two went off to college, number two in order of appearance, not in order of importance, um, you know, he didn't have an Afghan. I had started the same Afghan that I had made for his brother. And I decided not to use hand dyed yarn because A, that was freaking expensive. And B, navy blue and dye and white walls on apartment um, walls in apartment, in apartments, in apartments. <laughs> English is hard sometimes. Um, we had to pay to have the apartment wall repainted because the blue dye transferred to the wall next to his bed. 
So I'm like, okay, no more hand dyed yarns for the blankets. Now, granted, I think that sun has particularly moist appendages. Oh, that sounded weird. Like when you, if you were to shake his hand, you'd go, ooh. <laughs> At least that's how it used to be. So, you know, his feet must be the same. And he, anyway, we had to pay to have that wall repainted before he moved out or when he moved out. So sun number two, I went with Cascade um, 220 Superwash Worsted. And I held a double like I had held the other. The other was Kona Superwash Worsted or we're going to go with Worsted. I don't know now. I know that the cascade was not is not sport. It's uh, you know I'm saying that out loud. Pretty sure, positive that it's worsted, and um, held a double. Did the same afghan because it was pretty or you know handsome, gray because it's a boy, and um, it looked like crap. It just the yarn because I mean it's a beautiful yarn. But maybe because it's pl oh, I'm not you can't see my crochet while I'm working on it. Maybe because it's um, you know, a nice round yarn. I don't know. It the it looked like I was knitting. This was knitting, by the way, with two strands held together. Like it just looked like that. It didn't look like a contain like one yarn. So that was weird, and it wasn't bringing me joy, and it was really heavy. So maybe the Kona had been sport weight. I don't know. Um, the the pattern was from an old. I'm gonna say family circle. No. Nope. The pattern was from an old, I think a book <laughs> that had Afghan patterns in it. I don't know. Anyway, um, I ditched it. I ditched that pattern and I started over with, I think a crocheted pattern and I had my son approve the, the pattern. And I think I'm on the, th the third time through I don't know what happened to the second time through, but this pattern is from an old family circle. Um, and it's beautiful, but I, I, it's a ripple, it's a, it's a zigzag. And I just, when I'm doing it steadily, I can, I can just do it. But when I'm not and I have to keep relearning it, it's like, there's a lot of five and then there's skipping things and there's, I don't remember, see, because it's been a while. And so that poor guy never got his going off to college Afghan. He graduated a few years ago and it's not even, it's probably, it's probably like that long, but that's not an Afghan. So of course I'm making one for myself in between, which brings me great joy. No, I'm not going to give him this one because it's not machine washable and I'm not going to let this one go out to somebody who's maybe going to throw it in the washing machine because oh, it would be so much sadness. Oh, look, we're getting to the new color. Um, so, you know, I'm also working on that. Um, one, two, three, one, two. I'm also working on the, um, you know, the giant intarsia slash fair isle wrap. And that's, I'm going to sit down and work on that tonight. I haven't touched it for a few days. Okay, here we are. We're changing colors. Watch how this is exciting. See, it's blue. And then it's less blue. Woo! That's very exciting. Okay, that's it. That was the excitement. Um, When I get that one done, you know, I have one other giant project I need to do. Um, before the person dies um, and I don't know <laughs> I just need somebody I need a I need somebody to just make me some food and do my laundry and pat me on the head and let me just sit and finish some things for you know months that's what I need I like the padding on the head idea. That's a good idea. And the food, food is good. Um, so here I am working on this. Uh, yeah, so we've started the next color. So see how that looks? Just kind of goes boop and it's a new color. Oops. Everything's always backwards for me, right there. And you know, no editing. I'm not allowed to decide I don't like this pink yarn that I'm now using. And weirdly it looks pink and green. Wow, they changed both colors at the same time. That's not normal. 
usually just one changes at a time, but it's almost always a moral, a moral like a barber pole. So that was exciting. We got a uh, new rows started and we got to the next color, which is the last color of that ball. That's what it is the whole rest of the way through. And this is, this is the very, um, you know, the technique that I'm going to show you in case you don't know how to do it. And if you do, then, oops, then we can just chit chat. I was going to say tic tac and I don't know what that means. I know what it means, but that's not what I meant to say. So I'm putting this back in bag. Whoop. I always put the ball of yarn in first. Oops, except not that one. And then the hook. So it's at the bottom. And then the um, oh, the afghan. So that when I pull the afghan out, the hook doesn't go flying somewhere, hopefully. Hopefully it's still in the bag. Isn't that pretty? Whoop. Matches the bag. Um, okay, so the exciting thing we're going to do is I need to get ready for the next ball of yarn. Oh gosh, close unused applications. Okay, hang on. Let's see what I can close. I'm going to close this email and those messages and that document and Safari and mail and that now i'm gonna leave that open that's just a spreadsheet oh and my banking hey i um yes i want to save the changes i got my taxes uh sent in on the 15th oh, finally a little slow a little slow okay everything's closed except one spreadsheet that i want to remember to work on and you guys that's all there's no other browser windows open oh except they're not really closed. I just got a message from Edie. Um, what are you guys saying? Crochet has so many new stitches. At least I didn't know of them when I crocheted. I bet they're not new, but I don't know all of them either. Um, so I've sort of been collect not on purpose collecting, but when I find them at the shop, either in the sale bin, there's not always a sale bin of books, but um, I've been getting, they're all downstairs, so I can't show you. They're over there. Um, like the Japanese crochet books that are, um, little edgings you can put on things or little delicate things to make. And it's, it's, I, I want to make the little delicate things. <sighs> okay. So I am ready for the, I'm almost ready for the next, um, yarn. And my ball, I have a Swift right there. The Swift is fine, unencumbered un un by anything. And the ball winder is over here. And that's absolutely fine, completely freed up. But in between there is a bunch of crap on my table that I don't want to move. <laughs> so we're going to wind this one by hand. Um, so here we go. I thought you might want to watch. I know, super, so exciting. And I'm not sure why I'm using scissors because I usually break this with my fingers. But I, there's one knot and then there's going to be one tie because that's how the crazy mill ends work. It's nice to only have a few. So at the shop this week, last Wednesday, so within the past week, how about that? Um, I, oh, and then I can't look at which one I'm going to wind first, which one's going to go in the middle this one because one of my parameters is I don't know what's going to happen next. Okay. I, um, will this work? I don't know. Um, Malabrigo, uh, the, the, the winding of those skeins or the tying off of those skeins is often, not often, often enough messed up so that you end up with snarls on the swift. That's no fun. And there was, I had to, I don't know, wind a thousand balls of yarn in the very first one there was a big um, problem with. So I'm going to, you know, pull this down. There, there's my lap. And here's the one we're starting with. We're going to do a center pull ball in case you haven't done a center pull ball. And I like to take the yarn and just put it in my fist and stick my thumb out on top. Is that right? Yes stick my thumb out. I haven't done it for a while. And then I just start winding 
around and if what have I done in front of you before where I say I just count to some number? Maybe I haven't, but I'll just count. So that was 10. And see how I did it. I don't know if you can see how I did it kind of it's kind of at a slant on my thumb, but I'll after I do 10, I'll just give it a little like turn and and now when I wrap it there, it's kind of at an angle. Woo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have it around my knees and it's all jumbled up. There we go. Okay, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I'm hanging onto the tail for dear life because I don't want to lose it. I want it to be a sun or pull ball. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We're not going to do the whole thing. I mean, we are. Maybe not here. And I'm not too hung up on how many. And I'm not too hung up on how far I turn each time. And usually there's not a desk right in front of me. Isn't this exciting? Oh my gosh. See, this is very um, self-serving. Is that the right word? Because I want to get to the, so even though I'm going to work on the wrap tonight with the Fair Isle and the Intarsia, I'm going to, um, I'm looking forward to maybe taking a break and finishing that ball of yarn that I'm crocheting right now for this project. And then, um, I'm not even counting, I'm just winding. And then I will need this yarn to be wound. Woo! So I just keep my thumb in there. It's like a little Jack Horner. I won't try to recite it. Let's try to recite it. Little Jack Horner. <laughs> How's that? Did he sit in the corner? Eating his curds and whey? Now see, now I've, I'm off. That's not right. Little Jack Horner. Something with pudding and pie and a thumb and oh, what a good boy am I. That's it. See, we've changed the color. Is that exciting? <sighs> so I don't, one of my parameters for these skeins is that I don't edit out any colors, meaning I don't rip out colors I don't like or that I think will be not as pretty or don't match. And I am not... Um, purposefully starting with one one you know there's two ends to the skein right the beginning and the end and i don't um like look at the two of them and say oh i want to start with this one because it's prettier or because blah 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 insert random reason here so i'm um blindly, like literally closing my eyes. When I get it on the swift, I close my eyes and go to the one where they're tied together, the ends, and I just kind of grab one of them and decide that that's the one I'm going to start with. And that's the one that goes in the center pole. So that's, that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be random with parameters. <laughs> so there you go. So here we are. Whoop see that there's a knot you can take out your thumb i used to wear a ring on that thumb and i learned very very quickly that if you wear a ring on your thumb and you're winding a center pole ball on your thumb you cannot get the thumb out of the ball without taking off the ring and leaving it inside the ball so that was a fun thing to learn actually this is the ring i used to wear on that thumb now, and then I just, I'm going to shove my thumb right back in that hole and keep going. I do not believe that ring would fit on that thumb anymore. Thumb rings are interesting depending on what handed you are and what hand you wear them on. Look, we're in blue now. Um, you can't use scissors. <laughs> it's just really hard. Okay, so isn't that exciting? So I'm going to... Um, I was going to say, look at your beautiful faces, but I can't see you. So I'll look at my beautiful face and see, I see there's a few more comments. You've never done a hand wrap? Sat in the corner. Do you keep winding on your thumb until the, yes, I do. So I'll just talk to you and do some more. And when um, I get toward the end, I'll shake this. I mean, I guess I don't have to hold it down anymore. Um, it's much slower. I have a friend named Sheila 
who um, used to live here in East Lansing, and now she lives in Henderson, Nevada, I'm going to say. And um, she could wine, hand wine a ball and it would look like it had come that way from the shop. It would be beautiful. And then uh, my friend JC Breyer uh, let it be known that she can do even better than that. It looks even more like it's, it's just perfect. It looks like it was wound by a machine, which doesn't mean, you know, that's not always a good thing, but it's just awe inspiring. I do not strive to um, wind my balls that well. I strive to wind them so that I can knit from them. Now I have a perfectly good Swift and a perfectly good ball winder right there. I just would have to move crap and put it somewhere else. And then I'd be sad that it was in that other place. I mean, I'm sad that it's there now, but um, at least it's someplace I, you know, I don't know. It's a, it's an expected place for it to be. I don't want to move it to an unexpected place because I don't know, because <laughs> then it would be unexpected. I wouldn't see it. And maybe I wouldn't do the thing, which is to put it away, whatever it is. I can't see. Oh, okay. Just poured out my drink on top of my keyboard. So that's going upside down on the felt mat. And we're gonna grab, gosh darn these um, headphones. We're just gonna soak up some water. It's just bubbly water. We'll see if my keyboard still works. I do not yet have the brand new iMac that I paid for a thousand years ago. So, um, Either way, ooh, whoa, I made it drip on my nut, my little, on my legs. It's in the drawer. It's not in the drawer, it's under the drawer. Well, that's exciting. Okay, Thanks. more Kleenex. You know, I have like an Afghan I could use for soaking it up, but I guess it is just water. It's expensive water. I mean, it's bubbly water. Don't get me wrong, it's not just water. And I had a bowl. almonds. I'll use this as my wet napkin, wet Kleenex holder. Wow, oh, that was very exciting. <sighs> I'll tell ya. Put that over there. Okay, well that was exciting. Let's put that away. Maybe I'll knock it over again while I'm putting that away. There's still water in there. Wasn't that super exciting? Okay. JC Breyer. Yep, expert ball winder. Okay, here's another thing happening. <laughs> okay, so I'm putting down the ball. See, nice and clean now. My keyboard's gone. Keyboard's right here. I'm just opening, there's some animal hair. I don't know which animal because none of mine are that color. Maybe it's Zebby from the shop. Okay, did that work? Hmm, there's still, ooh, look, that yarn's wet. <laughs> there's still this glob. I'll let you watch until I get to that glob. That's exciting. Um, I like center pull balls because I have a cat. I used to have more than one cat. And um, cats like to chase things. That's probably a bad idea. Look, isn't that cute with the little green tail? Um, so if the ball is center pull, it's less likely to roll around. Um, and more likely to stay where it is, which, you know, how true is that? Who knows? But um, there, I got the glob done. But I um, also like center pole balls because when I do intarsia, which I like to do, if I, if I were to knit from the ball, which I don't often do, but if I were to knit from the ball and I needed more of that color, and it's not a center pole ball, if it's an outer pole ball, outside pole, whatever, then I wouldn't be able to go to the other end without unwinding the whole ball to find some more of that color. So a center pole ball, you always have a like an insurance 
policy where you can that's not it but you can go get the other another strand of the same color i don't know it's also a chance to um i mean like you know yarn like this you have to well you don't have to but you should wind into a ball before you use it because it can tangle mightily while you're if you just knit from the loop i've watched people do it and some can sort of do it um without trauma i don't know if they don't know that you can wind it into a ball but whatever so i didn't mean to spend this much time on it i'm actually pretty far along what else um so yeah crochet was kind of my covid skill i started going through some of edie's um uh crochet skill builder afghans that's what they're called and one of them uh is blocks and there are i don't know a thousand blocks not really there are quite a few though um and i think i made it through a couple and then the third one i was a granny square and i'm like i'm not doing a stinking granny square and so i stopped <laughs> just like any you know project i did a uh oh change color again very subtle um i did a block of the month quilt thing back when i was quilting semi-regularly and um like the third one was pieced applique and i'm like i don't like pieced applique and so i stopped doing the block of the month it was you know by the month so it's not like i had already paid for all of it um <laughs> and then the other one of Edie's that i didn't start but is really pretty is um a strips is like five strips i'm gonna say five it's some number of strips um yeah so you know it's crochet does use up the yarn it goes faster i mean it depends i guess the afghan for my poor son is not going faster even when i sit down and do it it's it seems it's a fussier pattern you know sometimes the ooh, more wet yarn sometimes the um knit patterns are fussier that's okay oh that's my tie i'm looking at the <laughs> at the video at the at the at the ah, the window i'm like what the heck is that it is the ties these are some nice comfy pants that my sister sent me so i now belong to the comfy pants brigade now that it's cold much appreciated Okay, change color again. We're almost done. So I might as well finish. Look at that half hour of winding yarn. And then we'll go through my mom's knitting bag. But I'm really enjoying crocheting this afghan. It's pretty brainless. There were some times when I would get along the next row and find that I had done four um, double crochets instead of three. And being me, I would back up the whole row, the whole, you know, there and back to, um, make it a three instead of a four double crochet cluster. Um, you can't just drop down like you can in knitting. You have to go all the way back. But you know, your stitches don't fall off the needles, so that's nice. But um, I haven't noticed any recently, and I'm doing a lot of uh, crocheting while, you know, being on a Zoom call or watching a, a movie. Um, so it's entirely possible that I'm coming across them and leaving them in if they and you know I'm okay with that if I was um if I was if I were if I was more I don't know at peace with myself <laughs> then I would um you know just not even go back and fix them when I found them but I do not have that kind of personality that I'm that at peace with myself this looks really pretty it's looking like one of those skeins of Zauber ball just the colors I'm close to done. More wet yarn. I, you know, I'm sad about the spilling of the, the water. It's not the first time I've done it on this Zoom. I always keep the water closer to me so that I, if I'm going to spill something, it'll be the water. That's my theory. So just hope the keyboard's okay. My magic keyboard. Isn't this fun? Um, yeah, so it's still on my thumb. And I once wound, again with Sheila, um, 
we were in her station wagon. We were coming back, we being Sheila and me, and I know Irene was in there. I don't remember if there was somebody else. I'm thinking not. I'm thinking I had, I was in the back seat and I had bought some really, it was, I was, I don't know if it was a stitches, but I had bought a giant hank of bright purple um, chenille yarn. <laughs> so that was chenille yarn. Yeah. It's, I made a sweater for my then sister-in-law that I think she really liked. I mean, she said she really liked it. Um, Yep, wound it in the backseat of her car onto my thumb, and it was, like, huge. My thumb was getting very tired, and the ball was getting very wobbly. And there was purple, there were purple fuzzies all over Sheila's um, station wagon for, it, she probably sold it with purple fuzzies in it. They were there forever. <laughs> that yarn just was, you know, it was purple. That was during, well... Am I out of my purple phase yet? Probably not. Okay. Can you see my lap? We're almost done. So exciting. More wet yarn. Okay. We're going to get to the last color soon. Oh, we're in like a, there's like an in-between brown color all of a sudden. And then there's the last color. I just have a few more loops around my knees. When you wind the ball on your thumb, the way I do it anyway, you don't, you can't see all the colors that are in, I mean, you can if you peel it open, but all I can see are the colors that are on the outside of it. When I wind it on the ball winder, it's more of a flat, um, a flat ball, you know, maybe people call it a cake, but it's more of a cylinder shape. And um, then you can see pretty much all the colors as they progress through the ball on that top or bottom side. Almost done. It gets kind of squirmy. Oop. Okay. Almost done. One more loop around my knees. One more trip around the sun. Okay, there we go. So then it's done. And I'll take the end and I'll just tuck it under some of that um, last thing. There you go. Center pole ball. Whoop. Okay. So exciting. I did not mean to wind the whole ball for you, but um, now I'm ready for my um, stuff. One big knot. Yeah. Uh, I have seen somebody like who, who was fine with laying it out in a big loop in front of them and knitting or crocheting or whatever they were doing from that. And I want to say they had a reason why they did it that way. And it made, you know, sort of sense, but I don't, I love the green on the blue. Um, I don't remember what it was or if they in fact did have a reason. Okay. We're going to drink some more of our, what's left of our bubbly water. And then Yay. I'm glad you learned something new, Diane. Um, I also, one of the things I like about winding the yarn ooh, by hand is that, um, you know, I get to touch all the yarn. So if there's, so yeah, it's slower and you could have it run through your hands um, from the ball winder to the swift or the swift to the ball winder. But, um, but, um, If there's a knot in my yarn, I want to know it ahead of time so I can undo it and then I'll have partial balls. And so I can make the decision whether um, I need to start a new. I don't want to be, you know, okay. If you're knitting along and you come to a big knot in your yarn or even a little knot in your yarn, I don't leave it in. Um, but I might decide and I might, so I'll undo it and I might spit splice if I can spit splice but I wouldn't um, just knit past it. And if I can't spit splice it, I may be in, you know, I, I'm usually an advocate of just wherever you run out of yarn, you start a new ball because you get more out of your yarn that way. But sometimes you want to like go back and start it closer to the side seam or something, the new ball of yarn. 
And if it's a knot and you're already like halfway across and, you know, it can be annoying. So I, I like to know ahead of time whether I have knots or not. Naughty knots. Okay, so hmm, this is my mother's knitting bag. It is cloth. I'll tell you what I know. It's cloth. It has wooden handles. Um, these are not my favorite colors, but this is the color of her bag, and it's um, nice wooden handles. They're in they're they're in fine shape. The bag is, um, you know, I thought it needed to be replaced, but it's actually doing pretty well. There's some stitches that could be re-sewn there. Hmm. Well, let's look inside and see what we see. Somebody made this. Those, the stitches are hand sewn along here. And there's a lining. <laughs> I don't know if it's fancy lining or not because I don't know things. And here we can see the inside of this fabric. It's fairly loosely woven. And it must be dyed on the outside because the other side is this color. And the outside is this color. Interesting. Okay. Jesse could tell me a lot more about that. All right. And then inside are some things my mom had knit. So in this um, used to be, maybe still is, there used to be a needle roll for straight needles. A lot of things were loose in here. Um, so some of the things that aren't in there because I have appropriated them are... Um, these these uh i've never purchased any of these these were all bobbins from my mom's um from this bag that are no longer in the bag so those used to be in there i don't i don't use bobbins anymore but i'm certainly not going to get rid of those i teach about bobbins but i don't use them okay now i can't get that closed and then also in there i used to have my mom's uh this guy I don't know if this is it. This is in remarkably good shape, but I wouldn't be surprised to find out that that was my mom's. I also, she had knitting needles in there and I know that this pair were hers because I remember distinctly using them when I was younger. These are size whoop, four. Are they Susan Bates? Nope. Boy, B O Y E U S A, and they're they're plastic. They're they're a bendy plastic, and they're not actually very straight. But that doesn't matter. And then I also remember this pair. These are metal, and whoops, and the tips are ah, very cool looking. And these are zeros, and they're metal. Are they? They almost look like they're like that silver loom material. I'm trying, <laughs> I just can't find the camera. So I remember that these are my mom's. There were some yellow ones. That's not them. Uh, are these the yellow ones? Woo! Nope, those aren't. Oh, those are the ones Marilyn gave me, I think. Um, Or somebody did. There used to be yellow ones that were stiffer than the green ones. Oh, there's there's one. I only see one right here. So that's a stiffer plastic. And that's uh, an eight. Also boy. So um yep, those were my mom's. I think these were two. These little guys. Oh, and these white ones. These are kind of plasticky also. So these these were my mom's. And there's you know pairs to most of them. And um, anyway, these are some, so they were in a needle roll. I'm suspecting I won't find the needle roll in here, but I can't believe I would have thrown it away. So maybe I will. But these are some bonnets that she made. Fair Isle. Let's look at her technique. Oh, well, yeah, of course. Yep, they were made flat. So, um, I, yep, <laughs> I can see things. And it looks like, were there any big carries? 
Yep, she just did a, like, just wrapped the yarns around each other. You know, and my Christmas, or yeah, my Christmas stocking, I don't know if I've shown you that before either, is Intarja, and she did a pretty darn good job of Intarja as well. So go, Mom. And some seams. Okay, so there's a blue one, and there's a red one. And I would get, <laughs> so I have these two older sisters, <laughs> and then I was third and so you'll notice there's two of everything and I'm not going to make any assumptions from that <laughs> um, but we lived in Minnesota back in the day I was born in Minnesota as were my sisters so perhaps and we moved when I was four so perhaps we just moved sooner and I didn't need hats I don't know or I you know these were hand-me-downs probably but isn't that hilarious there's two of everything and then this is oh there's more in here a stocking cap so we have knit one, purl one rib. Mom did stripes. And this was done flat and it's seamed. Is that correct? You know? Yes. Yes, I can see the seaming. Um, there's a... Uh, I don't know if you can see animal hair. That would not be from my mom no pets um it has black ribbing so here's the base of the hat the hat part of the hat oh i can probably no because we want to see the thing and then there's some ribbing and then it goes into not ribbing i'll show you the good side and then ribbing again and then not ribbing again and then there's a tassel my mom made a tassel it's black so you can't see it there you go. And it feels like nice yarn. Um, you know, that was back in the day when Red Heart was the good yarn. I mean, there was good Red Heart. There was um, Red Heart was, was, had wool and it was a nice wool. That's what I'm trying to say. And then here's another version in a red and white. Same. Boop, boop. That's a very thick tassel. Okay. Oh, look, there's the needle roll. So here we have a box. My goodness, there's stuff in here. Oh boy, okay. Here's some of these. I would have told you that I have them all in a drawer over there. Here's a crochet hook, that'll be handy. I have one just like it. Let's see, 4.5, it's almost just like it. 4.5, this one from my mom's bag says, can you read that? Uh, 45 cents. <laughs> okay, and they were in this box, which I remember has ends, but we'll find them, I think. And then, oh my gosh, there's a lot of stuff in here. Oh, I would have told you I had these too, but I didn't. Okay, so these are her stitch markers. And some of them are, man, I should be using these. Okay, I think I do have some of hers because I know she had a lot more of these um, coil ones I don't know what they're called split split ring ones Oop. but there's her stitch markers in a little plastic box don't know where the little box came from there were a lot in our household oop I dropped one hold on just like just like now people used to drop stitch markers and now I still do okay here's the needle case which matches the bag oh my gosh and this is lined with, um, so the same fabric, I think, as the, yep, as the lining of the bag was used to make um, places to put the needles through. It was for straight needles. It is for straight needles. And then there's little pockets where the points sat. So you'd put your needles in like, there's my green ones. Welcome home, little green needles. You put the points in the pocket. Oh, let's start up here. And put the points in the pocket and so you'd have your needles and roll them up <sighs> let's see this way and then tie them up so that's her needle roll just put it here 
And then, oh my goodness, a needle threader. Did we use a yarn threader? Betsy Ann yarn threader. Whoop. I don't even remember this. <laughs> Looks like a pumpkin. Betsy Ann yarn threader. Interesting. Well, this is more interesting than I thought it was going to be. What's this? This is a tapestry needle threader from Maggie Pierce. Feels like it's from the same um, metal. Like it's a thin, I could bend it if I wanted to. I'm not going to. I don't remember those at all. Safety pin. Safety pins existed. Here's a, a needle. You know what? I could appropriate all these things into my life, but then they wouldn't be in here anymore. Oh, kilt pin. Or diaper pin. <laughs> Mom was Scottish. Like like Scottish. Okay, I'm going for the little thing. Oh, yeah. So that was a kilt pin. And here are the diaper pins. I forgot that there were actual diaper pins in there. <laughs> yeah. Can we get it open? Nope. How about this one? Yep. Diaper pins. So there's her uh, stitch holders. <laughs> More kilt pins. Another diaper pin. Ooh, that one, the paint's coming off. <laughs> Another kilt pin. Here's one of the tops to the box. And we have some circular needles. Has a little bend to it. Is that intentional? Maybe. I'm going to go with yes. Is there anything written on it? I don't see anything written on that side. I don't see anything written on that side. So it appears to be a plastic needle. And here's another kilt pin and a bigger darning needle. How are we doing? Oh. And, oh my gosh, I'm going for the good stuff. Here's another darning needle, another diaper pin. Here's a little red cap that says boy on it. So I wonder if we'll find a little tube that maybe some of those darning needles went in. Here's the other cap to this guy. They don't stay on very well, but that's a set now. And we've got needles. All different kinds of, um, what are these called? Circular needles. No Addies. Ooh, that one has one of those. Uh, those. Oh. Can you hear that? Those cords that are like metal and um, zithery. Here. Kind of rough, kind of, um, I don't know, something. So that's that bag. And here's, whoa, a boy circular needle from American Handcrafts for $3. Susan Bates Quicksilver for $4.50. Here's a bunch. got some directions in here but what are these smaller things here's my mom's needle gauge or one of them boy boy must have been the you know the be all and end all here's a susan bates one it's the correct gauge for every type of single point and double point knitting needle and crochet hook not to be confused with the incorrect gauge susan bates factory at chester connecticut we've got oh Interesting information here. Approximate millimeter sizes are above those words. And then corresponding US crochet hook sizes except steel. Corresponding sizes for double point steel knitting needles. I don't know. Those numbers go the other way. Always ask for Susan Bates by name. OK. Um, I remember this. I don't remember this, but it looks familiar. The, it's a boy, B-O-Y-E, knitting pin and stitch gauge. So it's a dial and it's cardboard. And let's see, 
gauge for double point steel pins only on this side, the white ones, and then standard gauge for pins other than double point steel. That is so weird. Um, did we have, do we still have? And there, I don't know. Oh, and so you use the little arrow here. And so if I was putting a needle in and it was a nine, it tells me, let's not do the nine. Oh, here, an eight. Nope, that's the nine. Nope, the eight. What's the five? Ah, okay. So here's an eight. It's a five millimeter. The outside number is a five and then it's an eight. Wait, didn't I have an eight? Eh. Well, my eight doesn't fit through the eight hole, but this is a very old eight hole, so to speak. So there you go. Uh, but it does fit through the nine. Interesting. Okay, five millimeter is indeed a US eight. And then what does that say in there? Ah, oh, says Afghan, heavy luster Afghan and um, German towns. And you can see that the gauge usually for that needle is four stitches to the inch. Isn't that interesting? And over here is the um, corresponding crochet hook size and H. That's interesting. Okay. And then here's another little red cap. Hmm. The mystery. Here's another safety pin. Bye, Clara. Clara's not feeling well. She did not eat her breakfast, which that is dire. Okay, I don't see, oh, here's another needle. I don't know what, there's no tube that I can find, but I do have, this is instructions for counted cross stitch and a folk heart. And this is, um, well, I really thought I had this all cleaned out. <laughs> I guess I didn't. This is, I don't know, crochet stitches, or not crochet, what are they called? Embroidery, cruel, that's what I'm trying to say. Here we go. It is, what does that say? Cruel embroidery stitch chart. Note, this is a revised stitch chart for kits up to number 6810. Wow, an Erica Wilson chart. Okay, I don't know what she made. And then we've got, oh man, some half uh, index cards. This is her handwriting. I don't know what's going on with Lloyd Severson and all of his family, but on the other side are, um, that's probably Christmas. Yep, Christmas 54. Phew. <sighs> Knitting instructions, row one. We're casting on 118 stitches, roughly US 17 needles. Here's row one. Look. <coughs> We're stirring up some dust here, everybody. Row one, knit two, knit two together, knit three. Look at her putting periods after all her abbreviations. Slip one, knit one, PSSO. Oh my gosh, mom. Row one. Oh. Row three, hmm, we must be purling back. There's stars, knit two, knit two together, knit three, yarn over. So I don't know what this makes. Nine, 13, 17, 19. It's a mystery. I'll have to cast on 118 stitches and see what this is. But that's my mom's handwriting. And it was probably written with her fountain pen. She had a um, fountain pen that was not a fine point. I like fine points. Okay. Well, that was kind of fun. <laughs> that was different from what I expected. I thought there was just going to be a couple things I, I don't know, left in there. Um, so that's it. I, I won't keep you any longer. I uh, didn't really mean to keep you that long. I just wanted to wind some yarn and show you what was in the bag. And that was more exciting than I thought. So I'm going to put it all back in and I'll forget about it. Um, I should at some point in my life, 
knit those directions that she wrote and see what they're for. Um, putting all the things back in the bag. So, oh, dropped another stitch marker. <laughs> it's a generations old uh, problem. Oh, man, now, you know, I can't just throw the, this guy is up to no good. He just doesn't have to, I'm not keeping that. It's plastic, it's old plastic and it doesn't um, do anything. But everything else is gonna go in a Ziploc bag or something because I don't wanna have to be digging around and find um, needles again. So um, I got two new, you're welcome. Um, yeah, so I will see you next week. I don't know, we'll see what I'm gonna talk about. Um, Thanks for being here. Thanks for helping me go through my mom's knitting bag. I'll see you later.